I've been in New York for 13 years, and it's, uh, I don't know if it works the same way that uh, London works, but uh, in a city, especially when you're kind of a transplant and you come from another place, people actually like to talk about their New York City moment. Uh, which means when you became an asshole. <laughs> like, what was the moment you stopped caring about humanity? And uh, I remember my moment. Um, mine was about four years into living in New York. I was living in a five-floor walk-up, so there was no lift. And I hadn't done my laundry in two months, because that's how I handled that. <laughs> and, uh, so I had all my laundry. I was walking down the sidewalk. I had all my laundry on my back like Santa Claus. And I was kind of hunched over, and I was walking down this, uh, on the sidewalk. And in one motion, I knocked over a bike and a person. <laughs> and I just kept walking. I was like, that's not my bike, that's not my person. I'm not really sure how this is my problem. And that's how I knew I became a New Yorker. That's when I knew my heart was cold. But it's kind of crazy. Everybody talks about becoming a New Yorker like it's stagnant, like it's not progressive, like it doesn't get worse. Because like I feel like it's like everybody talks about their first drink. Nobody talks about becoming an alcoholic. And I'm in the alcoholic stage of becoming a New Yorker because I'm starting to do shit that I don't remember when it started to happen. Like I now yell at strangers. Often. And not any stranger. I'm not like like 100% crazy. I only yell at anybody that prevents me from getting on the train. <laughs> because I travel for a living, I'm in a constant state of I just want to go home. So um, the best story I can kind of explain this, uh, a, like a couple of months ago, I had been out of town for a couple of months. I was coming back from the airport and I live really deep into Brooklyn and the airport's in Queens. So it actually takes me like a bus and like 14 trains to get home. <laughs> and I was actually running to catch the last train in my, in my kind of thing. So I'm running to catch my last train and um, I... Uh, Okay, first of all, if you don't know anything about the trains, this the best way to describe this last train is like, this is the type of train that I'm so comfortable on that I fall asleep all the time and miss my spot, my stop, and it doesn't even bother me. I just kind of hold my vagina in my bags and I just fall into a deep slumber. I've never woken up with a dick in my mouth, so it's like a pretty good tactic you can all use here. So that's the train I'm trying to make. Do we understand? So I'm running to catch that train, and as I'm running down the steps, I have to make a decision because on one side of the steps is two girls that don't know how to walk in heels and on the other side of the steps is a couple and I have to decide who I'm going to push down these steps <laughs> to make this train. So I actually don't go with the girls because they looked really young and I had some sympathy for them because I felt like eventually you'll learn that no man is worth wearing heels for. <laughs> and that's their journey. That's not mine. Some teach bad guy is going to teach him that. So I let them go. I ended up going with a couple because the woman actually had some pep in her step. It looked like she was trying to catch the train too. But as I'm running down the steps, I hear the guy tell the woman, sweetheart, don't rush. That's not our train. I push past her. I run down the steps. I get to the train. The doors close in my face. And I look for him. Because I have time now. I look for him. I look for him. I find them. I make deep psychotic eye contact. And I screamed, but it was my train! I screamed it. Do we get it? I didn't yell it like, shit, my groceries were on that train. I screamed it like, motherfucker, my baby was on that train. I screamed it like a crazy person. And uh, I don't know what the slogan is for the two, but the slogan in New York City since 9-11 has been, if you see something say something. <laughs> but she's not even affecting anybody. I don't even know what that shit means. So I'm going to come up with a new slogan, which is, if you see the train coming, get the fuck out of the way. It's a city of eight million people. That's someone's train. And then there's like a little asterisk, and it just says, I have a knife. 